All right, let's talk chapter one, thinking tasks. Um, the really cool thing about this chapter was it really builds on, I think, what we naturally do in science and just kind of pushes you to think a little bit more. So one of the big things they talked about was students in lower levels will get into a pattern of mimicking. So for example, teachers will do a problem and then the kids will apply a very similar strategy to a different problem and get success. And they get addicted to that mimicking. And it's a great learning strategy when you're younger, but the problem is that when you get older, especially in those like grade 11, grade 12 tasks, we find that our tasks are multi-layered, multi-stepped, multi-sequence, multiple opportunities coming in. So it's really hard to mimic because the tasks are too complex. And so then students struggle. So what we have to do is we have to bring back the thinking applying them to new novel concepts and then kind of starting from scratch. And so this involves two key things that we're going to have to let go of. One is cranking through curriculum. Um, if you're going to have a true authentic clinking classroom, you will not be able to get through all those specific expectations. So learning to kind of let go of all of that curriculum is kind of step number one. Step number two is uh, you're going to also have to be safe with letting the students be uncomfortable. Thinking is hard. Thinking and learning is messy. You get stuck and students struggle when they're stuck. But the, the learning that comes out of getting unstuck is like amazing. And that's the stuff that like lasts longer. So if we want long lasting learning and long lasting problem solving strategies, we have to let students think. And so the big thing is to come back into these thinking tasks. So for example, don't set them up with prior knowledge and then have them regurgitate stuff to you most of the way through the lesson. Start with the question and then have the students puzzle through and try to figure out what do I need to know to answer this question? How do I go about solving this question? And kind of give them the, the ability to kind of think and struggle through. And so then um, you can kind of just kind of open it in like a big way. So for example, last year I started doing this and I need to do it better because what I did was I teed them up with a real world problem in grade 12 physics. So for example, why do we need a spin cycle in our laundry? Or what happens if uh, one of the kids' favorite ones was McPee leaves the box of Timbits on the roof of her car this morning and peels out of the driveway? What are, Will the Timbits go flying off or will they last on the drive to to school. And so having these open-ended rich tasks, then I told them like for the Timbit question, I was like, okay, so we got to learn about friction. We've got to learn about motion. And then we spent the rest of the week filling the gaps. And then Friday they solved the task on their own. But really what I should have done was on Monday presented that question, have them brainstorm, figure out, okay, so I need to know this kind of physics. I need to learn more about this. I need to learn more about this. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we learn about it. And then Friday they can solve their problem. So instead of me dictating, like I know what we need to learn but I told them what they needed to learn. And what I needed to do is actually let them struggle through it, figure out Monday what they need to learn, and then have the lesson set Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it's the same pattern as just instead of me taking the leads and telling them what they need to know, I need to let them figure out what they need to know. So, and I think we can do that across the board, across all the courses, is pose these like real world questions and kind of tie our curriculum into them and have them thinking about these problems. But the issue is we gotta break the mimic cycle. So to break the mimic cycle in that first week of school, a lot of us will do like team builders. A lot of us will do kind of um, core like uh, collaborative group problem solving, get to know you games, that kind of stuff. And so instead of doing some of our like plug and chug or like here's something easy and here we go, we should instead start fo focusing on more open-ended questions or more questions that prime your thinking. So for example, questions that prime your thinking are ones that aren't linear patterns. They don't have one pathway to get to the right answer. They may have multiple right answers. So for example, you can show like a card trick and they try to figure out like, how did that card trick happen? Or you can show them like a Fermi problem. So like these big open-ended questions, like how many blades of grass in a football field? And so I think some of us use that, but if we use they say three to five of these thinking tasks that are not curricular. So they're just real world, big, like what gets you thinking kind of questions that primes you for thinking. So then when I start dropping curricular thinking tasks at you, then you still have that thinking brain and you're kind of away from that mimicking process. So chapter one was all about priming kids to think, asking open-end questions and just letting go of that idea that I have to do everything for you and spoon feed them and just let them struggle on their own. And it's going to be messy. It's going to be ugly. The students are not going to like it because they got to work hard, but you know what? It's going to be for the better.